So if you're getting serious about water chemistry, here's what you need to know. There are several different grades of aquaculture and aquaponic testing materials. Some of them work better than others. What we have here is a range of some of the higher end ones that work really well. So we're looking at dissolved oxygen temperature pH are very important to, to monitor on a daily basis. If we're looking on uh, twice weekly, we're looking at ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and alkalinity. And then beyond that, we have some other chemicals that we can test. Another one that's really important to test in aquaponics is iron. So we see here we have several different types of materials. Uh, this one in particular, this is a, a probe that we can drop down in the water. Um, and this one measures temperature, pH, and dissolved oxygen. So this is the pH probe. We'll pull this cap off and put that in the water. And this is a dissolved oxygen probe that uses light in order to determine how much oxygen is dissolved in the water. Um, also, we have a water chemistry testing kit. We have some supplies set out here. We've got a brand new aquaponics water quality testing kit here. Um, and in these, you're going to get instructions on how to do the test. You're going to see um, all these different types of reagents and testing tubes. And this is what you're going to want if you want to be pretty accurate on your testing numbers, what you're going to get for your aquaculture water quality numbers. And so we have some of those tests set out here. Uh, in addition, we have a sample bottle. So this has got some of our aquaponic water in it already. I like to use the squirty bottle because um, it allows me to fill these test tubes up very accurately and quickly. Um, this is something that you'll be doing you know, multiple times per week and it takes time. So you wanna do it quick and accurate and not have to redo your test. Uh, we have a monitoring data sheet here so we can, we can record you know, when we did our testing, who did it, what tank it came from, what our temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and alkalinity are. And if we see any changes in water chemistry over time, we can record those here. There's uh, several different companies that provide the, these materials. Um, but it's really nice that we have these testing kits that are already set up so that you have um, the, the reagents in the, in the right amount, that they're very quick and easy for uh, a user to be able to get those um, water chemistry numbers that they're looking for. This particular system is a spectrophotometer and we're, uh, we're going to test iron with a specific one. Um, and this is what you call test and tube. So we'll have instructions here and we'll take one of these individual tubes we can pull this out here and uh, follow the instructions. It already has the, the, um, the vial here. It has a barcode that this machine will read and it'll tell us what the numbers are. So the reagents are in there. All you do is add two milliliters of sample, shake it, wait for the time, wait 15 minutes, and then you'll stick it in here and it'll spin and read the numbers and give you a number back. So let's go ahead and get started testing some of our water chemistry. First of all, I'm going to put on some personal protective equipment uh, so that I keep my hands, my eyes, and my clothing safe um, to keep these chemicals off of me. So the first thing I want to do is test temperature. Because we pulled our fresh sample out, I can go ahead and stick my thermometer inside of here and wait a couple of minutes in order to get that number. Other things you'll see here in the meantime, I have my test tube set up. I'm going to do pH, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. And I like to use this testing rack so they don't get knocked over. And I've got everything set up here um, with the proper reagent sitting right in front of them to make this as quick as possible. So after we've waited a couple of minutes, we can look here and we're reading a temperature of about 23 degrees Celsius, which is going to be in the um, right around room temperature in the in the low 70s. So I'll go ahead and record that number here. So the next test that I'll do is pH. Put their cap back on here. So in reading our instructions, I see that I need to fill, I need to pr choose the proper test tube and the octa slide. So what that is, we have this uh, where we're able to compare each of our uh, test tubes will fit inside of here and once we have our sample in there and they turn colors we can put these different um, strips in here to figure out how to compare which color is which so i'll slide the ph inside of here and so once i add my reagents and get the color change i can compare and figure out what my ph is so in the ph specifically we're looking for 10 milliliters of sample and I'll add eight drops of my pH indicator. So if I look here, I have our 10 milliliter line is way up here at the top. 
So I'm going to fill this sample all the way to 10 milliliters. Okay. And then next, I'm going to take and add eight drops of the sample or of the reagent. Okay, and then I can add my cap. Once I do that, I can shake this up, make sure I get good mixing throughout this water. Now, I want to get my other tests started so that I'm being time efficient. So I can go ahead and start with ammonia next. So ammonia needs to add five milliliters of the sample into the test tube. So I'm going to go here and add up to the five milliliter line and then I can set this into my rack and then I'll start with ammonia reagent number one and I need to add four drops of this. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right. So following my instructions here, I need to cap and mix and wait for one minute. So I'll go ahead and mix this set this aside and move to the next one. Our next test is going to be nitrite. So we're looking at filling our test tube to the 2.5 milliliter mark. So we're going to go ahead and fill up to 2.5 milliliters. And the next step, according to the instructions, is to fill the rest of the way up with our mixed acid reagent up to five milliliters. So that's this one here. I'll go ahead and mix that. And I can hold the sample and fill it up to the five milliliter line. Okay. Once I've done this, following the instructions, I'm going to look, I'm going to add, use the 0.1 gram spoon to add uh, 0.1 grams of the color developing reagent. So I have that here in the small container uh, and it's kind of a, a powdery substance. And I'll take my little 0.1 gram spoon here and go ahead and collect a level, level spoon sample. I'm add this into my test. Go ahead and cover this back up because you don't want the moisture to get to it. Close that. And I'll put my cap on here and mix this up. You want to make sure all of that reagent powder gets mixed up into your sample. Make sure you have the cap on if you're going to shake it hard. All right, our next step is we're going to do nitrate. So our instructions for nitrate are here, very similar to the instructions for nitrite. So I'm going to take and fill this sample to the 2.5 milliliter mark. Next step is to add our mixed acid reagent and fill it to 5 milliliters. Okay, once we have this, put our cap on, mix that. Next, we'll take the cap off. And we have to add our nitrate reducing reagent. We get a little scoop of this using that 0.1 gram scoop. And then we'll dump that right into our sample. Okay. Once we've done this, put this cap on, mix the sample up. So each of these takes a, a certain amount of time to set up. And if you look here, according to these instructions, we need to wait 10 minutes for our nitrate numbers to establish, or wait for our, our color to develop. You see it's already turning pink here. So 10 minutes, we'll be able to read an accurate number here. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to our ammonia. Uh, we have not yet added our ammonia reagent number two. Um, so you look here, we need 12 drops of ammonia reagent number two. You want to mix this up and be careful with this particular one as it is toxic. So you don't want to get that on you and you want to dispose of it properly. Put the cap back on this and we will cover this sample, mix it up. So we need to wait five minutes before we read our numbers here.
Now I'll take and put my syringe into the, t the lid here and what I'm waiting for is for the water color to change. So I'll add a little bit of my reagent here 